Hello, hello, welcome to another live stream with me, 320 Sim Pilot. Great to see you all here. We are taking a flight once again stateside as we're going to head from Chicago down to Atlanta. I've very carefully chosen uh, a livery which I hope is roughly correct, which is Delta today. Uh, I really like this livery, it's very nice. Uh, and we're going to be using the Fly by Wire A32NX. This is a relatively recent experimental version as of a couple of days ago. Thank you all for joining us today. I hope you enjoy it. Let me just turn on the audio outside. Uh, as ever, we've got a lot of screaming airplanes. <laughs> That's the problem with having FS traffic installed. But yeah, great to see you all here. Thank you all for coming along. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, welcome to, uh, let me just jump into YouTube. We are, of course, live on both YouTube and Twitch. Uh, over on YouTube, Landing Gear 001. Hello to you, S4, C, James, Atkinson. James, I hope you're doing very well. Thanks for joining us. Sorry I didn't answer you earlier. I have not had as much time as I hope to sort things out today. Uh, Zeth, I hope you're doing well. Chaos as well. Lazarus, I hope you're doing very well. Thank you for joining us. 30 FPS in Chicago. Yeah, I probably don't get any more than that. <laughs> uh, Rick, good to see you. Ed, has that. Great to have you here as well. Uh, Sir Phonix, Wintry, Chickpoint. Chickpoint can't come along today, but uh, yeah, it's great to see you for at least a short while. Thanks for saying hello, Chickpoint. I hope you're doing well. Duncan, Kuba, uh, Yaroslav. Great to have you, Yaroslav, as well. And uh, Christopher BB. Lloyd, Jay, Trevor, and Nick is hello from Finland. And Nick K, good to see you as well. And uh, Nor Alkaz Lee, thank you all for coming along over on Twitch. Uh, I can see Dogmatic, thank you for coming along. Uh, yeah, exclamation mark root will hopefully work. I don't know why the cloud bot isn't working for you yet. Let me just reset it, see if it wakes up. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming along. Uh, James Atkinson's over there on Twitch as well. He's going to be flying along with Speedbird 999 again today. Excellent. Uh, Lauren V says, Delta, of course, is a massive hub at Atlanta. This was their livery back in the 90s. Excellent. So, yes, I, I, I did at least know that Delta had a hub at Atlanta. <laughs> There's a fuel truck arriving. Uh, but Lauren V, thanks for coming along and moderating it as well. Uh, and Flight Dispatch 320, good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. And CDI Fix. Uh, we are indeed flying on Vatsim today. Great. So, merging the chat, another Sunday afternoon stream. It's been a little while. It's also been a while since we've been in the A32NX. Let me just move my chair around. There we go. So, yeah, it should be good fun to see where it's at. It was in a very good place last time we flew it. So, uh, yeah, we took it to Grenoble. So it's definitely time I, I went abroad again, as it were, outside of the comfort zone of Europe. So here it is. This is a livery by uh, Mike V has this up on flightsim.to for the A32NX. It's a really nice livery. This was always going to appeal to me. And 90s liveries <laughs> always appeal to me. Uh, and also... This is actually an interim livery. I think it was sort of, they didn't have it for very long. But yeah, the cheat line down the windows, I really like. Uh, and then you've got the, um, the sort of just the simple, bold, classic colors. Yeah, I think it's very smart. And a bit of chrome on the bottom, which is always appreciated. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. It also features one of my favorite things, which I didn't notice until recently, uh, that it has the cutoff line on the tail to keep it horizontal, a bit like Singapore Airlines. Um, which is really nice and something we have on the official in-house man delivery. So yeah, really like that. Another reason it's smart. So yeah, great job. This is a slightly dirty livery. Got the streaks down the windows. It always amazes me how grubby airplanes get sitting on the ground in airports, but they, they always do. So yeah, there it is all along the windows. Around the door as well, you'll see once we remove that. And if you look around the, the Leap 1A engines, starting to get a bit oily and greasy with that white paint on the engines. Not a good idea to paint your engines white. They're always going to end up looking... <laughs> Looking a bit oily and grubby because, of course, a lot of work goes on with them. A lot of checks are done. So even if they aren't leaking, they'll soon get dirty anyway. Uh, Lauren Reese is probably because it wasn't ever put on the Airbus. This was a classic on the 737s, the Mazoc, and the 7576. There you go. Uh, CDI says, I can't use that sim. I fly fighter jets on, on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Some don't have flight plan features. There you go. Yeah, it is a bit difficult sometimes if you want to do that. Stewie plays. Thanks for following. Uh, late 90s delivery, says Jay. Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. <laughs> Uh, Flight Dispatch flying along as the American. Excellent. Giuseppe Gaming, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, as I'm once on cloud as well. Thanks for coming along. Aaron Davies says, I'm two miles from O'Hare right now, and the skies are indeed currently that blue. Yeah, it's a gorgeous day. Gorgeous morning here in America. So using real time, real weather, it's absolutely lovely. There's a Southwest colleague then. Stu Play says, uh, teach me, Captain. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know how much teaching we'll go on today, but hopefully a nice one hour 30 flight down to Atlanta. James asks, what terminal are we at? I can show you on the map that we are... Uh, there, there. Uh, what's that? I don't know what terminal that would actually count as, but there it is in the middle of the, the airfield. And we are on the H pier. Or oh, apron, I suppose. Delta so there we go. It sounds like we're just using traffic, so there's no air traffic for us today, which makes life easy for our departure. And what I'm going to do is jump into the flight deck and we'll get it all set up. 
yeah, this is very nice. We'll have to do a photo shoot en route for this livery. That's Terminal 3. Thanks, Dogmatic. Thank you. Those are American Airlines cakes. I was setting this up. I didn't. I ran out of time today, uh, and I was a bit late getting this set up. And I thought to myself, I'm definitely going to put load this in the wrong place. There's no way I'll manage. Uh, I'm on. I think this is the latest American, uh, sorry, experimental version because uh, it was only done yesterday. I think I updated this. Evening, Head and Jay Robbins. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I am well as well. Just happy. Thank you. So he's eternally tired there. Well, I hope you get a bit of a break soon. <laughs> Dogmatic says, I'm based out of here in real life, so this is cool that you're doing this. Excellent. Well, you can help us out. I hear we've already at the wrong gate, but uh, <laughs> maybe in the 90s. Can I use that as an excuse? Did Delta ever use this gate? We've never flown as Delta either. I think this is our first time taking a Delta aircraft out on the stream, so I'm, I'm going to forget the call sign for sure. Let's jump into the flight deck. 82 x is in a very good place. Oh, we're going to get that Simbridge thing. Which I'm, I'm not even using the MCDUs, but there we go. Uh, yeah, it's in a, a very good place right now. Uh, that's going to get annoying. Let's hope that stops. Um, but aside from that message I'm getting, it's uh, yeah, it's very good. It's very good. So you've got so much integration, as we know. You can get all your ground stuff run through this. And I have downloaded the flights plan onto the old iPads. There it is. So from Chicago O'Hare down to Hartsfield, Jackson, Atlanta, Delta's hub. There's our route if anyone's planning to fly along. Oh, there you go. So I don't have it. I, I last thought that was three hours ago with the A32NX. It was a good idea to update before the stream. Yeah, yeah, it would have been a good idea. <laughs> but there we go. Uh, we might get that message a few more times. That's my fault. Bit breezy, Wesley runway. Good visibility. Pretty cold, though. Very cold. Fresh morning. Fresh wintry morning. Excellent. That's a nice day to go flying. We've got 0 fuel weight one. There's been two updates of experimental since yesterday, so I'm definitely way behind then. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Simbridge needs an update. It's a bit broken. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we'll see what happens to that message. I'm not relying on Simbridge, I don't think, for anything in particular. We're not using it for the weather either. So, yeah, so unfortunately, Simbridge isn't getting any breaks in. Oh dear. Uh, Lauren V says, JetBlue, I forgot where they park. Odd 7 departure. Um, I'll show you what. It flight planned us on. Yeah, the comp ski, so Ord 7. Okay, I'll write that down. Comp to... ski. I still can't get used to the, the strange. Oh, there you go, there's not many departures. <laughs> this strange. Um... Is that all the departures there are? There you go, so it's just a departure. Cross 5.5 the arc GCO, at or above 3,000. Cross 8.5, at or above 4,000. Maintain 5,000 if I'm able to comply. Initial climb. All aircraft expect radar vectors to first en route navigate fix. Expect clearance to request altitude flight level 10 minutes after departure. Top altitude 5,000. Right, well, we can put 5,000. Now, I have a bit of fun today. I am using some hardware. So, you might not see me using the MCDU, uh, sorry, the FCU, but I I'm controlling it through a piece of hardware I have in front of me. So that will hopefully make things easier for me. And I just need to remember to show you what I'm doing because I can see it here. <laughs> but of course, despite the FCU, we're actually looking here to see what the airplane is going to really do. Right. Okay. What else are we missing? That is meant to be on Concourse E. Okay. Yeah, we are in the wrong place. Okay, right, so uh, let us just have a look around the flight deck. So this is sort of like a live airplane after parking. I think that's roughly how I've set it up. We've got the fuel pumps off, we're on the external power. Seatbelt signs are off, but the lights are all sort of in the arm position. The IRSs are aligned, as you can see. Uh, we've, we've not really set up anything else. Um, so we would just go through a few things, make sure the weather radar is indeed off, which it is, and check we've still got some oxygen, some oil, some hydraulics, which we do. Let's load up the... MCDU, correct database. So first of all, let's see where this is sitting these days. AOC, init. Let's initialize it. All seven departure is a singular waypoint, so it never gives you the SID on Simply. Fair enough. Thanks, Nomatic. Thanks, LRV. Yeah, that's right. We'll just head out and then get ourselves over to it. Uh, great. So init. There we go. That's worked. Um, and what we can also do while we're here. Oh, here traffic. Delta 13. 
Ah, oh, it doesn't have our routing yet. Okay, let's try next A and see if then it will uh, load in our, our route. That was quick. Okay, so there we go with the Delta 2738, also at KCLT. No idea where that is, unfortunately. Uh, we're going Cosnex 18, flight level 380. I think we've got a bit of a tailwind for this one. So there's our flight plan. Good. Let's load in some wind while we're here. Good. Very quick. And then we'll load up a weather. There's no ATIS today. There it is. Send. KCLT is Charlotte. Thank you very much. James is right next door. Excellent. Which side did James go for? Oh, I can't see if he's outside. There you go. That could be James there. Now we'll go to receive messages. Nothing. It does take a second. Should be able to just sit on that page. Um, good. Brighten that up. Let's get the Q&H in. We're going to have to swap over to our old inches as we are over here. 2992, which is not correct. It's 3028. Haven't flown a fly-by-wire 320 in about a year. EFB looks great. Looking forward to the 380. Yeah, the EFB is very good. Very good in here. Meter, there it is. Select the meter and print. Whilst that does that, we've done our data. We've done our init A, flight plan time. So the question now, which runway? Which runway? So it's a breezy westerly wind. We need to get out of here facing west. So ideally, we want 28 right. Alternatives are 28 left, 28 center, 27 left, 27 center. <laughs> um, but I think we'll just go 28 right because there's no controller. Charlotte is a big American hub, enemy territory. <laughs> there you go. Nor asks, does a new piece of hardware you're using work with the Phoenix AC20? I've heard about some limitations due to licensing. It does, although I haven't got it working perfectly yet, but I believe it should. I've got it interacting correctly, but not displaying correctly, if that makes sense. 2-2 two, two left is usual for southbound departures. 2-2 two, two left, well, we'll take that. Bit of a crosswind takeoff. Two to left. Thanks, Laura. Nothing available. No problem. We're going to climb out and then we're going to head to our comp C point um, whilst climbing up on the radar vectors. And then away we go. Secondary, still not available. Red nav, not going to use anything. Although, having said that, we do have our limitations on climbing. So we've got 5.5 arc GCO. So let's put in the GCO. And I'll put in a DME. And now we just have an idea. Um, I could put range rings in as well. They did add that, of course, ages ago now onto the A32NX GCO. 5.5 .5 is a bit tricky, so I'll just put in 5. That's our first ring. And then if you want two range rings, you've got to just select another one. You can't do two on the same page, sadly. And uh, that's 8.5, so I'll just put in 8. So we can go slightly past both of those. But now just give us a warning. Good. We're effectively going to go straight ahead and then left Komsky and en route good um what else do we need to do over in the mcdu the issue with being able to climb by this city is more for heavy it's for airspace protection there you go yeah we should have no trouble doing that uh, yeah i keep my weight in kilos as well even when i'm in the states <laughs> yeah george i'm good to see you george has not ventured into the us on vatsim yet what's the main gotchas compared to the uk push back under your own control on level eighteen thousand instead of ten thousand. sorry transition level yeah, it's those things. Midway traffic. Knowing where you want to park before you land, yeah. Um, also, uh, the departures are very different. They don't have as prescribed departures. Nearly always it's some sort of radar vector or straight line, and then they tell you what to do. Um, but nothing too shocking. If you're managing OK in Europe, I, I think it's totally possible, even though I was nervous of doing it. <laughs> so I'm not really one to talk. Oh, I don't have graph in here. I do have the Navigraph charts, of course. Uh, what else are we going to do? Good. Okay. So that's our route. That's all in. Uh, payload time. If you want a payload, that's what we need. Where do I do that? Oh, right there. If you want a payload. So let's import it. We need just over six tons. I'm just going to up that. Let's do 6.9 tons. Oh, oh. 
go. That's real fueling time. Uh, I think, what do we have on board actually? Yeah, not too much to put on. That's fine. Payload. Let's import that. Pretty light today, 129 passengers. But we'll take it with their bags. Real boarding, 11.45 minutes. Um, let's do fast. Begin boarding. So they're boarding. That's good news. What I'm going to do... Oh, yes, audio as they do that. That's great. I'm going to get APU up and running. And the music as well. Excellent. <laughs> Which do you enjoy more, 32NX or Total 320 Neo? I like them both. I haven't used the 320, the Total 320 Neo much, but it was very nice. It's certainly one of the best X-Plane aircraft now. It's very good. So the hardware I'm using is the uh, Simple FCU. I don't know how many of you have heard of it. I'm working on getting a review done. To set the range rings, you go to Fix Info. So Flight Plan page, top left. Fix Info on the top right. Type in the what you're basing it off of. So that's the VOR, Golf Charlie Oscar, and then the radius there. Give, and that put in the ring. You could put a radial, which will draw a line in it as well. So secondary mad nav in it to B time. I'll let us load, and then I'll do that because I know it's automatic in this, which is very handy. How are we looking outside? Let me get some audio up for you now. Yeah, sick of the fleet. <laughs> Southwest BA, American. Awesome. Let's also set our wing view. Overhead traffic, American 240 is uh, 18 miles east. Direct our Zuko for the uh, ILS 2810. Through 5,600. And O'Hare traffic, Delta 1367, clear, rolling 18 right. Or yeah, my frame rate is struggling. Right. It's the thing I get with the traffic. Southwest 1823, okay. departing 31 Center at Midway, RNAV Comiskey, Midway, Chicago traffic. And O'Hare traffic, clear, 2919, clear from 83, right, O'Hare. Okay. It might be a bit loud for you. Let me just, let me know how the audio is. Uh, Bruma says, how come the engine indications sometimes have X's and other times they have 0% and 1, for example? That's because the Felix aren't powered. So right now, this is not a powered system. In the real aircraft, it's a... Actually, there's one thing here, which is the oil should also be amber crosses on the Neo okay, traffic, you know, um, because it needs the Felix power. So to do that, right, you go right, up Alpha here 9, Bravo, and you can actually turn on the Felix power. November and now, in the real aircraft, these will, all these numbers would appear and your oil would appear. doesn't seem to be functional here. So I'll turn that off. Um... But what we could do, if we put the mode select switch to ignition, you'll see that the fade powers up and then it gets all the senses. But it, after you park up, it, it shuts itself off after a few minutes. On the old CO aircraft, you'd still get the oil indication, but for some reason they decided to get rid of that, which is a shame on the, uh, on the Neo. We do appreciate your business having you aboard this flight. If there's anything we do to make your flight any more enjoyable, please don't hesitate to ask. Welcome aboard. There's a very American PA for us. Excellent. Um, good pushback systems. Right, what's this? Can it cause conflicts? Other pushback others. Yeah, that's fine. We have done this, haven't we? So let's call the tug. How are we doing? Fuel has got 30 seconds to go. Payload is on, I think. Hence the PA. So that's good. Yeah, me wait traffic citation. Once it's off in the party, one way, two, two left. Let's um, get the. Top. GPU off, APU bleed on. Oh, her traffic's going 1784, attach from 822 left, off of 14 Bravo, November, double short 22 left. <laughs> Anyone's voiceover seems legit for this flight, says Bernard. Absolutely, absolutely. Alex Van der Paz, good to see you. I hope you're doing well over in the Netherlands. Traffic American 240 is established. 12 mile final 28 center. Right, fuel. We wanted 6.9. We got just under 6.9. So that's also done. Let us. That's all done. Oh, so, oh it's very clever this add on, isn't it? Look at that. Got rid of the jetty for us. Close all the doors up. Got rid of the chocks. 
Super. Really good. Really like that. So. We're on pier H. So we're just going to push back as we see fit. Oh, I'm having real trouble with this app today. Push back to sort of face outwards, I suppose. Uh, let's just run the checklist, which they also do have in here. Cover prep, gear pins and covers, fuel quantities, seat belts, ADS barrel ref. Four star, parking brake is... Let's see what they're... I'm going to run with their checklist today. Parking brake is on. Oh yeah, no, it's not. We're not ready. The checklist worked. So let's put in our weights now. We're done with that. We got our 6.8 by the time we get going. 62.7 takeoff weight. We know we've inserted the wind. And there's our weights arriving with 1.3 extra. Alternate fuel of 1.5. Trip fuel of 2.9 for 1 hour 30. All very reasonable. About what we expected. Finally then performance. Nice long runway. Bit breezy. Flap one's what I'd like. Uh, flex. Does it give us a flex? No, it doesn't. We have to tell it. We'll go for the classic. 69. Uh, the elevation here is oh, 600 feet. Okay, let's drop it actually. Let's go for 65. As you depart from slightly higher elevation, your flex temperature maximum will drop slightly. Um, for example, on the old CEOs, the maximum flex temperature was 69 degrees uh, most of the time. But if you went to somewhere like Amsterdam, slightly below sea level, it would go to 70. Love the texturing on this radio management panel. Has this been uh, adjusted? Looks very good. I feel like we've got some new textures here. Let's just rip off that weather. There it is. Just make sure nothing's changed drastically. So cord. Yeah, westerly wind, one degree. Altimeter of 3028. Excellent. Let's put the flight directors on. We've got our 5,000 feet. I'm going to put it into nav. Ah, there we go. Right. <laughs> Manage the speed. Okay, that's better. Uh, right, we got 129, 134, climb nav, 152, 5000. I thought we were going to have right fun there if that wasn't going to work. <laughs> Alex is watching on the 55 inch TV. Very nice indeed. Life is good. Very good. <laughs> Editor says, Hey, 320 Sim Pilot, glad this, to join the stream for the first time. Watching your videos has helped me get into the 320 and learning SOPs, and it's safe to say I'm in love with the Airbus. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you very much for coming along, and thanks for watching the videos. Right. Let's make our first announcement. I'm just going to do a straight pushback because it's easy for me. Um, and then we can all work it out. I think, looking at the way the lines are set up, I think there's three lines here. But I don't think we could get two. Right, be we might be able to. Well, it doesn't matter. O'Hare traffic, Delta 2738, pushing back from apron H. That's what they can get. <laughs> right, let's get the beacon on. Thrust it is to idle, windows closed. Doors closed. Interesting, even the PA's are done correctly. So take off speeds, windows closed, beacon on. Next is the after touch checklist. Brakes released, run the timer, start the clock. Excellent. Look at this. This is such a good add on. So we've decided backwards. Right, let's start up engine number. It's not a long taxi today. Let's get rid of weights and balance. We don't need that. So American Airlines often do single engine because they've got such big airports. And we're, we're going over here, so we could do one engine out and then start up the seconds. Let's do that. See how that goes. Should have had the seatbelt signs on. There we go. Camera crew would have to call you about now and demand that. Quite rightly. So let's start up. Engine number one. Time is running. Ah, my selectors are not working. Got pressure. Bow's open. Spinning. I know what it's going to complain about. Fuel pumps. It will. The A320 will start with fuel pumps off. I don't know if this A32X does now. It didn't used to. It's British Airways joining us. Kelby, thanks so much for the $10 super chat. Really appreciate it. Kelby says, good evening. Glad I could catch this stream. Excellent. Thanks for coming along, Kelby. Glad you can make it. And thank you as ever for supporting the channel. Being far too generous. Really, really appreciate it. 
I hope you're doing very well. Thanks for coming along. Ah, oh, Daniel, you said you haven't filed a flight plan. Even though the bag may not be well be falling. Sure no, I haven't. No, you're right. I haven't. I'm like, just, no just having trouble with that process. Let's well, see if that works. Go ahead, Travis America. Filed it now. Hopefully that shows up. 28 Center at Papa 2. Joining Papa to hold short of 28 right at Golf Call. So that can stop. Parking brake on. Remove the tag. Engine number one is started. Mode back to ignition. Goes on off the AP bleeds, but leave the AP running. Don't need the engine anti-ice. We can arm the ground spoilers, recenter the rudder trim, flaps one, and we'll put on the yellow electric pump to help with that. That would have been done by the other pilot while before we set the flaps, you see. There goes the tug. This is the other advantage of doing single engine, is that it's, it's very quick to get started up and out underway. It can really save you some time. Would you prefer Phoenix or Fly by Wire? I like both. I use both. No, no doubts half an hour in and we're underway this is good i mean i did have everything set up but even so i'm pretty happy with this a uh, slight bug with our uh oh no no it's just this now idle yeah good could we fit to no, it's possible you could fit a short haul and a short haul why happened to our colleagues next door do they push back over there and there's our va right anyway let's run the after start checklist now the tug's gone I always like using different checklists just to see what, what things are in there. Anti ice not required. Hiccup status is checked. Pitch trim. Very good. It is 34.5. A little bit aft today. A little bit aft. 34.5. And rudder trim is at zero. Oh, here. I see. We should have marked these as complete. Next to the taxi checklist, we'll do that once I've started up the other engine. Let's just get a really clear idea of what we're going to do now. We're going to taxi out. I should have really a better taxi chart here. We're in H, it would be on that frequency. We're going to taxi out. Basically, we need to leave the open entirely and then take November. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, traffic, Delta 2738, taxiing out to uh, um, Ramp Hotel, taking November to runway 22. 22 left, I probably should have said there. Taxi light, runway turn off, clear right, clear left. Speedbird waiting, brakes release. Speedbird 99 following uh, Delta to uh, runway 22 left. The audio up. Let me know. Maybe a little bit of audio extra for you guys. There we go. Scott Road Traffic, American 466 on Alpha, holding, uh, waiting for the Speedbird and then taxiing ah, to the runway 22 Nexus. left. Fantastic sounds from Boris in this aircraft. Really very good. So we're going to cross over one, two, and get out onto there, which is the next American 240 crossing 28 right at golf call holding short in November. As soon as we're out there, I'll start up the other engine. I'm an Alpha and we'll wait for you to pass. Thanks, Light Dispatch. I am highly anticipating the fly by wire A380X. Indeed, Austin, absolutely. George, I'm ignoring the F1 until later. I presume you are too. Yes, I am too. And I don't know how much I watch. I'm not, uh, I'm not having a great season already. <laughs> There's our colleagues. We are definitely holding some people up. Air traffic, Southwest Midway pushing back, stand Hotel 8. Midway traffic, Southwest 1325, taxi, parking. Ah, of course, yes. We can just zoom in on the main chart page. Air traffic, Delta 831, taxi, 2-2 left, Victor 2, Victor, O'Hare. Very clever feature. Anyway, we know roughly what we're doing, don't we? There's a queue of people waiting for us there. <laughs> 737 over there, not sure what they're doing. 
Anyway, you're a long way away. No one vacating here, so we'll go left here, then we'll start the other engine. Jetpack in, thanks for the... Sorry, Jetpack Jan, thanks for the follow. I was trying to read that, not looking across at the other screen, otherwise the whole head turns. <laughs> okay, straight line now. Let's get the... Not that one, that one. AP bleed on. You don't need the yellow actually pump now. Most active ignition. There's that PG running. You've got some pressure. Engine number two. Once it's up and running, we'll do the flight controls. And we'll brief. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> That's a hair for James. <laughs> Lazarus says, I'll attempt that sim again. I'm in the UPS 339. Godspeed. Excellent. Yeah, come along. A bit loud next time. Okay, echo, thank you. Echo. I need uh, November Echo Echo Alpha 19 for my game. Turn it down a little bit. Thanks, George. Excellent. Perfect spot on audio for the Elite 1A starts up there. Should have a little brake check. Yeah, they're working just fine. Yeah, they are great sounds, aren't they? Agreed. This is on Vatsim indeed, Pennywise. There's the available message. Back to norm. Off. Off. Uh, don't anti ice. We're all good. That 77 is waiting all day, so that's good. We have traffic, America 1650, taxi to left via Alpha 2 to left via November. So we're going to get all the way to that holding point there. Great. Run some flight controls. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Busy place. Uh, and we would have, of course, done the rudder. Okay. Now, let's put the autopilot to max. Don't know how well that's going to work. Let's just slow it down a bit. Nothing wrong with doing 30 knots on nice, smooth taxiways in a straight line. Um, but... Clear traffic. Southwest to play. Taxing runway 22 left via... Five, uh, sleep for take off. That's what can happen if you do it in a sim. Yeah, <laughs> it's just one of you. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, right, there we go. Uh, let's go take a config. And then we'll stop and actually run that checklist. <laughs> and uh, O'Hare traffic, American. Still have a Batson 5.5. Continuing taxi oh, left on November, right on Echo, Echo, Alpha. I'm going to try finding that again at the holding point. Maggie, hope you're doing well. He says, hello from Chicago. Always a nice surprise seeing you fly out of a hair. Yeah, excellent. Thanks for coming along. So, I'll leave a nice pretty view of the aeroplane. Let me just refile the flight plan. Cool something in use. It says something in use. Session on the ground, try again in 90 seconds. I th are you sure we haven't got a flight plan if that says we're in use? No, that's not Chicago, that's Canada. Where is Chicago? There's Chicago. Get out of Chicago. Flight's in right of passage. So there we are, out of the holding points. Yeah, we there we're filed, we got a flight plan. Excellent. Okay, let's make sure we know what we're doing. So we're going to take off. We're going to come straight ahead. If we go to nav, we'll see it better. Uh, and then 3,000 feet and then 5,000 feet. And we're going to make the slight left turn on route at a suitable moment. Climb as we see fit from there. Engines are nice and warm. Add to arc. Stop that timer. Otherwise, flap one takeoff. 
Normal speeds, not particularly heavy at 62.8 tons, pretty light really for a takeoff. I'll do that on the perf page. I'm going to have my FCU, which at the moment, I'll see how it's going to work in the departure flow. This will be interesting to see actually. Uh, but we are stopping at 5,000 feet. James Atkins says, just had a salt and vinegar chipstick emergency at the whole Oh dear. <laughs> Haven't had one of those for years. <laughs> Chipsticks, very good. Okay. Let's ask. Now, I think for TCAS to work. No, TCAS is working. Excellent. So, they're not descending. In fact, they're heading away. I can't see anyone on approach. Yes, there they go. It's a departure. Over here, traffic. Delta 2738 taking off. 22 two left. Southerly departure. Right. Lights on 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 there we go and strobe lights on let's just finish up the flight wire check so flight controls we've checked flaps are at one plus f ah auto brakes not going to work here is this going to do that thing it does radar pws on an auto engine brakes like normal ekmmo take off no blue aside from the auto brakes but we don't actually need the auto brakes to go it won't stop the auto the take of config so we should disregard that line up checklist Take a runway two, two left, we'll check. TCAS is TRA PAX 1 or 2 are staying on. That's done. Next is the approach checklist. Good. So brakes released. Let's go. It looks like you're getting some pretty bad frame rates, so I can only apologise. I'm hoping that clears up as we go. I'm getting much better frame rates on my PC, so I'm a bit confused about that, as usual. Yeah, something is absolutely grinding my sim. Uh, sorry, my stream into a halt. Uh, annoying. Like I say, I am. My sim is running okay-ish. Wouldn't say any better than that. Hopefully, as we get away from some of the traffic, it will go. So let's go. Take off. Half side stick. Two clicks. Man, Flex 65, SRS runway. All the thrust is blue. Wind trying to weathercock us into the wind, which is coming from the right. Uh, there's 100 knots. <laughs> James is so, such a pro man to pilot. And B1, rotate. Let it weathercock. Flywire has that super rotate law. Positive climb, gear up. There's nav. Order thrust has armed and I can yeah that's good. Chicago traffic. American four six six lining up behind the speedbird on two two left. There we Chicago go. Traffic. Things are very smooth on my computer now. I can see the stream is not smooth. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know why. That's ridiculously frustrating. It's completely smooth for me. Ugh. Can't win, can't win with that. All uh, right, thrust sweep is back. First climb, climb, auto thrust. I'm going to engage the autopilot. I'm going to stop Keep moving the camera, it might help. Auto thrust has lit up on my hardware, which is great. AP1, there it is. And away we go. I don't know what has happened. Usually this is a X-plane issue. When the frame rates are too high, we get that sort of lag that you're seeing. Oh, that's terrible. It's silky smooth. It's surprisingly smooth on my PC. <laughs> right above the S-speeds. Flap zero. Cut the speed brakes. Triple click is reverting. Let's get rid of all the lights now. Actually, no, we're in America, but we have those on but we'll get rid of the nose gear lights and now we'll turn en route to our first point comp ski left turn nav leveling off at five i'm not going to touch that i'm going to do it with my fcu here so let's go up to transition 18 thousands chicago air traffic american 466 yeah, level yet timer off so we've got the landing gear, we've got the flaps. Away we go. Border traffic, Delta 31, lining up to two left. Baker says, my flight sim is doing the same thing tonight. Interesting. Let's try external view. Podcast version of Microsoft Flight Simulator, indeed. Speaking of which, 
Episode 2 of the podcast is out. I'll be working on episode 3 very soon. I have never seen this on stream, ever. Where it's this, the difference is this ridiculous. Like I say, my, my flight sim must be at over 30 frames a second now. Let me just try something, am I? Aha! How's that for you guys? It's looking good. Kamiski, sorry, Kamiski. Thanks, Lauren. Let's just wind the range ring up. OBS has a CT priority, CP priority. Which might help. So what I did there was change it to, to back to one of the other pages and then back again, and it worked. How interesting. <laughs> Through 10,000 feet. I'm going to turn the lights off now. Seatbelts off. Let's go to airports. A very lovely slideshow there. This is Paul. Excellent. That's a much better. Excellent. Thanks, George, for and your staff. Good to hear. UPS. Yeah, I didn't change any settings. I literally just redid it because I just knew that wasn't right. That the, that stuttering is usually done when we have two high frames in the sim, and I know we don't have that today. But there we go. There's our classic. So there's Meigs over there. Oh, good times. Many years flying from Meigs in the 737. Rounds of this little one. I don't know what it is. And there's another one behind us, and then up to O'Hare. Many years. <laughs> That's all I could do in sim. Exterior shot bits like it. Okay, yeah, probably getting higher frame rates outside. That's probably what's going on there. And we are underway. Great performance off these Neo engines at this weight. I think we might as well head up to cruise level. 380. Recommend max. 390. No trouble then. Oh no, what am I doing? Not on there. 380, there it is. Fantastic. Let's go to standards. I don't have a, uh, an EFISH control on my um, hardware. Zero traffic, wrong with the left taking off. Matt, thanks for the follow. Thank you again to um, Kelpie for the very kind uh, super chat. Really appreciate it. No more checklists to do in this fly-by-wire world. So let's get up to cruise and then have a think about, <laughs> have to straight away start thinking about how on earth we're going to get into um, Atlanta. Because again, I have no idea what Atlanta looks like or what the arrival's like. Yeah, so I don't know the answer to that question, I'm afraid. There's, uh, I'd have to see sort of what was going on. How do you use fixed info on the 32NX, George asks. Yeah, so we've already done it today. I can delete them out now, which is a good point. Oh, so flight plan page, top left, top right, gets you into fixed info. And then you've got these side arrows will take you to the different numbers, two, three, four. They're all different info boxes. And I can just press clear to get rid of it. Uh, or you can type in the waypoint it's based on and then put in a line or a distance around it. Change that to 20 miles, for example. And it'll appear behind us there. But I'm going to delete it because we're not using it anymore. Thanks for the subscription to Bokot. Good stuff. Oh, yeah, Atlanta is 390 or 37. That is a very good point. What's our overall track? Yeah, by PXV, we should have been on 390. <laughs> Which is there. So, all the way up, 3 9, we can do that. Quite rare for us to get right up to the top, to the ceiling. Hopefully, everyone's enjoying their flight back here. What a stunning, stunning morning. I'd love to go to Chicago and see it on a day like this and visit like Meeks. <laughs> that would be cool.
But yeah, yeah, Sim Reef is a bit. I mean, it, it, I think Sim Reef divided it into two parts. I think it decided that uh, this part counted as ever so slightly west, <laughs> I guess, with this part. And then I guess later on, we do a bit of a left turn there and we turn east. I think that's what that's about. The hardware is the uh, simple FCU, Daniel B. That's what I'm having a look at. This is the experimental version of the fly-by-wire A32NX, hence the terrain showing up. It's just great, isn't it? This is the real deal. I'm guessing final approach doesn't work, but um, aside from that. Delta 2022. Thanks for coming along. Flight dispatchers looks at them. ATC shortly all the way to Atlanta. Oh dear. Oh dear. We have to do our best. Elisa Maggie says it's like minus one right now, but yeah, spring is really nice and you should definitely visit. Yeah. I'd love to see this part of the world. I've not been to sort of many parts of North America. I've only been to of North North America. I've been to um, New York. Probably the furthest I've been. I think finding that kind of work. Okay, interesting. I never half done a flyby. It does lateral, but not final. Okay, yeah, yeah, you can do nav mode. Good tailwind today for once. We usually have a specialty of selecting uh, routes with strong, strong, strong headwinds. <laughs> working out nicely so we got six tons we've burnt 900 so 6.9 that's about what we left with looking good pressurizing climbing 500 feet per minute quite normal Your ears will be popping as we do that it says new cruise out 39,000 that's because we changed the fcu altitude so if you put the fcu altitude above what you entered in the mcdu i.e if you change this altitude to higher it will automatically update the cruise level if it's lower, it won't, and you have to type in the new lower level. So just clear that message, we know that. And I'll put K-A-T-L in. Majin Dimal, hello to you, thanks for coming along. George says, might have just ordered a simple FCU kit, so I hope your review is positive. Good excuse to use my 3D printer again. I take responsibility if it's a mistake. <laughs> yeah, after all, this isn't my review. I'm just using it. <laughs> what I will say so far, I've been very impressed with the... I like the... Um, the controls, I like the buttons on the, the Simple FCU. I like, there's a lot of good things about it. There are a lot of good things. I think it's been very neatly done. Uh, so, yeah, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the pushing and pulling of the switches as well. It really works. If we want to go into open climb, which we are, I can pull and then I can push it. Oh no, <laughs> now there is no managed climb in the A32NX at this stage, but let's say I want to go into heading. I can pull and there we go, we're into heading. And then I can turn the heading knob and it just it just works. I mean, I'm really impressed with this. I can turn it, I can spin it around, I can pull vertical speed, put it into VS, I can push vertical speed, put it into VS0. And you can see all that happening down here. So functionally, it's great. Ultimately, you can tell it's 3D printed. You know, it's not an iPhone. <laughs> um, but look at this, it just works, it's great. And that's interesting, if you put minus here, that it shouldn't give you the out blue so I should because you're descending away from the level it shouldn't have an armed out because it knows it won't reach it in the real aircraft uh, if I just put it back into open climb I just pull thrust come open climb there it goes it's great I really like it and I'm going to put it send it back towards the nav course just on a gentle intercept 
Okay, so of course there's managed climb. It's just nothing to manage on the climb. Uh, yeah, but managed climb should... So now I can push manage nav again. And there you go. It wouldn't do that. If you're pointing away from the track, let's say we're in heading like this and we turn off and you're pointing away, it will say no nav intercept for you. I wonder if this will do that. Yeah, but it should still have a managed climb mode because it's it if it knows there's no restrictions the airbus will climb you up to 390 uh, sort of climb thrust and the managed speed so it, it still knows what it's targeting for that so if you push it in it would say still climb and you can climb in climb mode all the way up to the cruise quite normally even without any restrictions it's, it's not the same as open climb so it should if i push in it should do that which it doesn't so if i press nav now it will it'll turn back there again nav I did not do the printing, we can I cannot 3D print. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Um, and also you can pull the speed. You can turn it up and down. So it's actually, although you're seeing a speed there, it's actually controlling a Mac number like that. And I can see the Mac number on my simple FCU. So you should see the Mac number up there. There it is, 76. So that matches. And I've got the simple FCU has little LCD displays, which I'm really impressed with. It even has little orange dots. If I push in the speed, see how it goes dash, 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 little dot, orange dot. And I've got that orange dot here on my FCU hardware. It's very good. Very Airbus centric. <laughs> it does work with other aircraft if you can set up the software. But it does take a bit of work. But the software for the 32NX is sort of ready made. They've got it ready to go. It should do managed climb on that exactly so oh of course yeah but right so it does work i thought it worked i thought it worked fine in this few checks and it does and i was talking absolute nonsense the only reason it was refusing was of course because i was in heading mode it can't do a managed climb when you're in heading mode and that's why lauren v said are we on track so there we go back into nav push it in climb there we go obviously Obviously. Thanks, Chaos, <laughs> for pointing out the obvious. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, DK has very kindly tipped $3. So sorry, let me replay that one. Uh, DK, thanks so much for your $3 tip. DK says, thanks for all your great work, and please say hi to your cat, brackets S, for me. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, you're very welcome. And I will say hello. The cat slash first officer is not with us. She's over in the other room today. She's snoozing. She might join us later on. She usually does at some point. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. I will say hi to you. And there is just one FO, one cat. <laughs> Noah says, now we need an affordable MCDU and we'll have quite the setup. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you can buy the Simple FCU pre-printed. I think you'll either need to have a printer or know someone who does or know some way to get it printed. And it says it will take a couple of days of printing to do it. It's quite a lot of um, stuff to print. George, enjoy your dinner. About to catch up on my train back to London in an hour. Excellent. Yes. Yes, that's a good point. The Simple FCU has a button to change speed and Mac. And that button is in the middle. It's actually here. And it should be, I would, I think, it would be best if... Now, there's no, you know, it just says speed, Mac. There's no reason, this is just a switch, after all, that you couldn't program it to be the track FPA button. And that's something I would consider doing because it uses software called MobiFlight and then you, you can change the inputs and outputs. Now, I'm not very familiar with MobiFlight, but I can't see why that's not possible because that button should, it's right in the middle. And you can see I'm changing between speed and Mac, which is a real automatic feature in the Airbus. I, I don't often have to use it. Um, so to change that to track FPA would be great. I'd also love a flight director button. So I might change the expedite button because it does have expedite mode. There you go. It has that button. And you get a little green light as well on this Simple FCU, which is really cool. Like I say, very Airbus-centric. It looks just like it. I, however, don't really use Expedite mode ever. 
I don't like it. Um, so I would prefer to have that as I might change that to be like a flight director button instead. Could be an idea. So then when you're flying your visual section, you can turn off the autopilot, you can press the flight director button to turn those off, and then you can press track FPA and put it into track. That'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? It does have the LS button, funnily enough, but no flight director button. It's even got landing gear lights. Flight, it's got a little flight director light and the parking brake light, which works. Yeah. Yeah. David says, nice to see the great fly by wire. Seems to be more in the shadow of Phoenix on streams these days. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, I uh, enjoy all of them. I actually struggle to get through the fleets now. I've got too many, too many aircraft to fly. I, I, uh, oh look, that's the end of our flight already. We're almost there. <laughs> yeah. The Phoenix is great, but the Aircraft is also great. I use the Phoenix when I'm trying to go somewhere a little trickier, because of course it has final lap mode. Flight Dispatch 320 says that I did a spin the other day on a 320. The uh, captain said the toilet couldn't be used until around flight level 200. Have you ever had this? Yes. Yes, that is a frustrating but nonetheless possible MEL. Yeah. James Atkinson says, I've got an Ender 3 3D printer, might give it a go. <laughs> and also, FO Cat is a single part of the group, they are indeed. So, uh, Lauren B says, sounds more like a safety company procedure thing than actual functionality of the aircraft. No, it is a, oh, I believe it's an MEL thing. The reason the toilets can't be used at 200 is if the there is a pump used, so the toilets work on vacuum pressure. So, they have a pump for when there is no difference in pressure they can use a pump to sort of drain into the the sewage tanks on the aircraft um here's our last oh, just punching the microphone of course uh, and there we go any second now we should see our star back out star nav good stuff um so yeah the toilets drain into those sewage tanks we'll just put the tcaster below and what can happen is if that pump has failed they don't flush on the ground the sinks will work and you can wash your hands but the toilets won't be able to flush because they can't generate that pressure without that pump. So on aircraft with that situation, then once you climb above flight level 200, there's enough differential pressure between the pressurized cabin and the non-pressurized sewage tank that it can drain into it. There's a cruise PA. <laughs> Excellent. Top of the hand altitude, I just do three times my distance plus about 10 miles. I do have a video on that, when to descend. There is an open source FCU in development by one of the fly-by-wire engineers. There you go. Flight dispatch says, I guess to do with pressure. Exactly, yeah. You can hear the pump when on the ground followed by a horrible smell. Yes, you can. So there is a, I don't know if it's on this model. There she is, looking beautiful. No, no, you can't see it. There is a hole, I think it's about here, or is it here, somewhere there, and that's the drain for that system that pumps out the toilets, and if you're standing near that, as you hear that pump run, you get the worst sort of sewage tank smell, because it pumps a lot of air out, horrible, do not stand near it, and I say that even more importantly, because I have seen trails of goo coming out of it, you do not want to stand near it when it's running. Bernard says, surprised by the lack of atom coverage on this route. Yeah, it's quite early in the day, I suppose, over in America, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Does fly by wire have VNAV? It does indeed have VNAV, but not for the final approach section. That's still missing, uh, is my understanding. So, here we are on our routes. Bit of a crosswind now. Ending at Matthew. 
there's a bit of an arrival. So they have told us to expect the triple one ar arrival from Matthew. And that will end at. Oh, Chipper, there it is. So let's put that in because that's not going to change. Uh, and then what's our landing expected to be here in Atlanta? Another huge, huge, huge airport. So that's what we need to solve. Where are we going to land? What's the weather like? Three two zero twelve gusting twenty one, cross windy. Three two zero puts us on the westerly runway. Then bit off centre line. There you go. Uh, so two seven left, right. Two six left, or right. Or two eight. Ben Thomas says, I'm really looking forward to when fly by redo the A320 NX model. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Check the chart for the runway to plan. Oh no, check the chart. That's far too much effort. Is it our, does our arrival give us a clue? So we'll go to Chipper and then I suspect we'll transition out via Kiwi and then in. They did part two seven right. Usually lands west. Du, du, du. No, none of that's important. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Do we have a controller of any variety? Are we going to actually have to figure this one out? There's an Atlanta center. There's no ATIS. Okay. Two six right in real life. We'll take it. Thank you. Two six right. Oh, up there. There we go. Into here. Cool. Okay. We can do that. It's a 2,700 meter runway. Plenty of room. What's going on? Why can't Did they not land on Tuesday's right? <laughs> visual Tuesday's right. <laughs> the Americans love a visual. my frame rate survives then the visual won't be a problem it will be a real nuisance if it doesn't okay let's put it in then but this says RS26 right I don't have a chart for that I must be doing something daft here I've got 2.8 right 28 center, 28 left, 27 right, 27 center, 27 left. Well, now I see it. <laughs> uh, why am I doing that? What's going on here? How do I get. I have to press this, do I? Press that? so hard for me to get used to this airports yeah I don't want Chicago do I so how do I how do I move it on ah there we go <laughs> good 
But we know what we're doing here. Chipper one. That's already pinned. Approach. Ah, uh, that's two six right. There we go. Oh dear, this is not good. It's <laughs> embarrassing. Chipper one. Ah, uh, let's two six right. And then there's the airport charts. And then we'll zoom in to find out our actual parking. Good stuff. We've made it. That was a process and a half. Wouldn't have happened if you used the EFBs as the chaos. Yes. <laughs> Good stuff. So, chipper one. How are we going to transition? That's my Zello. So, is there a transition onto two six right? No. It looks like vectors into Zello from Kiwi. So, chipper one. Haynes or Zello. We know Zello is a transition. And then Oh, is it via? So where are these points? Lemke Abe Just checking on the airplane. <laughs> oh Lemke and Babe are there. We're going to give by both of those, aren't we? Zoom in. There it is. Downwinds. Vectors back in by Zello. Great stuff. Let's grab a new weather. Then we'll load up the weather there. This is pretty standard arrival. Typical of a sort of German airfield. Uh, and then RS onto the right. RS DME, 1101, 275 degrees. We've been caught out while the DME is not matching with this one. Yeah, it doesn't match here either. Look, 1.7 miles at the threshold. I don't know why they do this. 3 degree slope. And a decent bit of elevation. Yep, yeah, 1,000 feet elevation. Radio altimeter should come alive at 3,500 feet. And platform altitude is going to be 2,700, which is only 1,700 feet. Very short fire on the approach. Very short fire on the approach. But we can just, I'm just going to try and manage descent out, see how well the A32NX gets us down these slopes, and then I'll arm the approach as we get down here. 1.7D at the threshold. Let's put in the correct runway. 26 right. Uh, weather's arrived. Forty, yeah, print. Making serious progress today. This is a quick flight. The transition. I don't know how to choose them in America. <laughs> I'm just guessing. I don't know why Lemke and Babe were options for the transition. Frankly, because. Our routing already took us from Matthew to Chipper. So, don't know. Off we go. Downwind. 2100 for MSA. So, we'll be above that until we join the ILS. Which is good. Uh, George Tadbrick asks why you can't get Arnhem to work in the 3 x I know about track FPA mode, but when I'm on approach, I can't get redev line. I don't think that's working right now in the 3 x I think that's all that is. I got asked on that sim a while, uh, while on final ILS approach to 25 left, if I could switch to 25 center. I said yes, turn off the other flight director and slice it to the other runway. How would you do this in real life? Yeah, pretty much that. Uh, You've got to be careful not to destabilize the approach. I wouldn't do it too close in, but yeah. The trick is fly the airplane and don't get too distracted with the MCDU 
Um, if the other pilot has a chance, they might be able to do that, but they really should monitor you first. I wouldn't do it sort of low down or below a thousand feet, though. But in Frankfurt, uh, 25 left, because it's 25 centre. 25 left and centre are the same distance, so yeah, that would be fine. You couldn't do it in some places, or you got to watch out where the run one runway is closer than the other. Charles de Gaulle, for example, they, they might offer you a runway switch visually. But if they do, you need to be careful just that, you know, one, one will be slightly closer than the other, and it does make a difference if you're depending how far out you are. Right. Uh, so I'm just going to print that, which we've done. There it is. Let's load it in. Q and H. Not cold. K T L. Let's get the right one. <laughs> uh, altimeter. I'm looking for A. 3026. Three two zero twelve gusting twenty one. We don't put the gust in here, so three two zero twelve. But we do take it into account for crosswind limits. Temperature seven, so they're getting a nice temperature increase for this flight south. Transition eighteen thousands. Landing config full. We have one twenty nine. Typically slow for a neo that they always are. Not a massive fan of that, but that's what they are. And chart says, oh, this is right. Eleven ninety. If we go around, Mr. Approach climbs 1,800 feet, only 800 feet above the ground, that is, and then a right timing turn to 4,000 feet in mount on RMG. 4,000 feet is what they get. Let's just see what it has in here. Oh, it doesn't have to go in there, but yeah, there we go. Good stuff. So, DMEs are slightly misaligned, so that would be a big one just to not get our heads in the wrong place and also downs of elevation weather's nice though crosswind from the right should be nice views George says it works in your video well yeah I don't think I've done an RNA video I mean I've never done one using final app mode, I don't think, in the A32NX. Go around in the flight plan, will come with the FMS rework. Thanks, Chaos. There you go. Bernard says, they managed to add the copy cup in the printer, which is astounding, given that they don't have the source files for the copy model. No, I know. It's, it's fantastic. I love the printer. I like this copy cup as well. It's written for Captain. <laughs> Yeah, such a cool place. Such a big place. And look, gives us a top of descent. Doesn't seem unreasonable as a distance away. Let's see if it has the restrictions. So I go to plan and constraints, and then let's just scroll through. It's got 3,000, has a restriction at. Sorry, not 3,000. A chip has a restriction of 13,000 feet. There you go. Which is what it's expecting to be. The actual restriction is 13,000 feet. Cool. Indeed. Top of the sentence countdown. Ben Thomas. Yep. Perf page. 182 miles. At 1911. Half an hour. Just under half an hour. Oh, there you go. Benji's asking, estimated time on route until top descent. So there it is. We're live time today. So 1911 is, is accurate. And we're 1847. I'm going to get a low water break. What else have we got in here? So this nice progress bar. What? Um... We're not doing pushback. We got a landing calculator, not a takeoff calculator. So fill it from the OP, 
Okay, ETL. And we're on 26 right, so let's go 260. We know it's a thousand feet. I don't know the runway slope. It's rarely significant, frankly. And uh, where did Jefferson put it? Spent all day searching for that. Yeah, what I'm looking for is a percentage as a, for the slope of the runway. Wow. And it's an average over the length of the runway, but some runways will go up and down quite notably. No, let's leave it at zero. Can't see where they hide it. Zero. Runway landing distance available. Two six right. Two six right. We're going to land beyond the threshold. Note number five. LDA, 2,591 meters. Thanks, Ian767, for the follow. 251. There it is. Approach speed. One two nine. Wait, sixty one oh four four. Yeah, that's probably what we were at the time. That's fine, we're not gonna change too much. That's gonna full, not overweight. Not reverse thrusts, and we're not also landing calculates. So low water break, two thousand two hundred ten meters. I wonder if that has the factor involved. I, think, I would think so at that distance. BMC, thanks for the follow. This is the experimental version of the fly by wire, David. But apparently it's out of date. <laughs> Which I should have known. Yeah, thanks for Alexander. Uh, if you are enjoying the, the stream, do please hit the like button. It makes a huge difference to the channel uh, if we get um, some likes on the video. So please do. I'd really, really appreciate it. Thanks, Drone. Lol, for the follow. And diesel. Indeed, I was interacting with the virtual iPad. The landing distance results include a safety margin of 15% added to the calculated distance. Thanks, Chaos. So there we go. I was going to say, a typical like low water break would be 2,300 meters, so that makes sense, really. That's a 15% factor that most airlines use. It doesn't have to be in an emergency. You could ignore it, basically, but yeah. Most people wouldn't. So what you've effectively got is the distance that Airbus test pilots think a normal pilot would do it in, not a test pilot, and then you've added a factor onto that. Which is pretty reasonable. Fifteen percent is not too much, really. Brian says, "Evening all. A fly by wire finding now. Have been having this little beauty, or have I misunderstood?" 
Uh, no, we, as I understand it, we won't, we'll have mostly VNAV, and I'm going to use it for the descent, but we won't have it for the very final, final approach, that's all. But, you know, we have it for lots of things now. We've got this top of descent arrow. So it's get, it's there, like, for a lot of things, just not for the non-position approaches, really. So it depends what you're asking, really. As some people, well, that might be all they were looking for. That's no good. Got to be slower than that. Let's see if that works. There we go. Thanks, James. <laughs> um, no, no there is another problem with my streaming. I can see. So let me just. Strange. Same thing happened again there. It is good delivery, isn't it? So looks like we're going to have an approach controller, which could mess everything up. Now you can see the grime around the doors. It's good, isn't it? Such a shame. Spot view, outside view should look like this. So much better. Really top notch delivery though. Thanks, baby, for the follow. So there you go. Bit of a view outside. Um, <laughs> now I've not seen a video of, of pilots drop, air dropping photos to each other of each other's aircraft. <laughs> I've not seen that. Uh, Berman says, "Is normal law direct law when gear is deployed on approach?" Oh no, you'd go 
Normally you go from alternate law to direct law when the gear goes down on approach. If you're already in alternate law, a bit of normal law, that wouldn't typically happen. Great delivery up there with Retro Monarch, says Luke. Yeah, agreed. It's very good. Ezra says, interesting. Mac decimal 82, and I can't catch up for the last half hour. 90 knots direct crosswind. Yeah, we've got 100 knots crosswind here. Surprised you're not catching up. Thanks, James. Yeah, curious to see that. <laughs> Is the fisheye effect on the drone cam perhaps dependent on zoom level? Yes, of course. Yeah, so for the drone camera, it's zoom. I mean, this is what I mean. I've, I've, if I zoom in close enough to actually see the airplane in the sort of circled normal spot view, it gets chopped off because it's... Uh, why is it centered here? And this is true of every airplane in Microsoft Flight Simulator because it puts the airplane right at the bottom of the screen. So the only angle where you can actually see it is here. And even then, it's always being chopped off. Whereas with the drone, I can put it where I actually want it. I always have to use the drone for screenshots and everything because this is just hopeless. You can't get a good screenshot with this circle view. Maybe there. That's sort of where it works best. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the spot view in, in Microsoft. I, I winch about it all the time. <laughs> just like, what's this? What's that as a view? I'm probably doing something wrong. Maybe there's a setting I can change. It wouldn't surprise me. But to see the airplane, I have to go out like that and then I get this sort of fisheye effect because of course it's this wide angle and then we put the airplane in the edge of the wide angle which is a disaster it's the worst place to put it and here now we have a stretched back of the airplane and a shrunken front you know i'll stop winching evening james hope you're doing well oh, james has been flewed up oh dear a few ill people today hope you're doing well hope you get better soon james keep yourself warm and relaxed how do you get the terrain ready to work? Asked George. Uh, uh, you have to use the experimental version for that. Thomas says, You are really hard to understand. You talk very fast and mumble. Indeed. And I do apologise for that. I will try and be better. I I know I, I can do that. Worse on streams. I find it easy. Of course, on a video, I can do several takes. <laughs> and I'm preparing what I say in advance. There you go. George has excused me. It's a British thing. <laughs> there we go. 4.6 tons of fuel. Having burnt 2.2, 4, 5, 6, 8. That adds up. That's what we want. The terrain is now in development version. Thanks, Chaos. Even better. But you, I think you need to install the... Um, there some software in the installer it is all explained in the installer if you want to install that Briar says wish I could get my sim to do this when I was flying along a cruise yeah wouldn't it be good if when you're you're just flying along and your, your simulator just sort of... You know, like, uh, I don't know how many of you have played uh, the video game Red Dead Redemption, but in that, if you sit still too long, the camera sort of goes into this cinematic mode and starts panning around and showing you different things. I think that'd be really good good, uh, good in Flight Simulator, as it looks so pretty. There you go, look, I can actually put the airplane in the frame. That's the difference. Then you want to zoom in on detail. Probably seems like a really minor thing to complain about, but to me it bugs me. No end. Drone. Spot view. Drone. Spot view. Right, I'll stop talking about it now. <laughs> I promise, I promise. No more today. Simbridge, that's the one. I'm using an Xbox 360 controller, or I don't know, I don't know if it's a 360 controller. Maybe an Xbox One controller. It won't surprise you to hear it's sort of pink, magenta, and black, sort of faded. 
between the two. But yeah, I use an Xbox controller. Works very well. It's the it's the way, definitely the best way to control the drone. Yeah, where's the flyby view? Agreed. Yeah. Flyby view, runway view, looking at the aircraft landing. Where's all this stuff? This is basic simulator stuff. I'm surprised they're still missing. And I can't see there's any limitation technologically on that. I'm sure they're focused on other things. That's probably what happens, but uh, yeah. Or a chase plane like in P3D. There you go. So it's like dispatch. Cobber Webb would like me to explain minima. Minima is the altitude or radio altimeter height at which we need to see certain things before we can continue the landing. It will depend on what sort of approach you're flying as to what you need to see. For example, today we're flying an ILS to category 1 minima. So this is pretty basic. So 1190 feet, which is the altitude, I need to see the runway basically, or the runway approach lights. At 200 feet above the ground is what that equates to because the airfield is a thousand feet above sea level 990 so it makes sense if it's 1190 yes means that we'll be doing this 200 feet above if we're doing an auto land or a low vis approach then that could be lower and we would use the actual height and use the radio altimeter height to put it in and you put in a radio instead of an mda or a barrow as it's called here so you put in a radio of like 50 or maybe even no if you're doing an auto land. So that's a very, very, very basic guide to quite a big topic there. But um, yeah. Lazarus says, sad thing is more camera views got rejected from the roadmap as an idea by a Sobo. They believe these are enough. Oh, that is a shame. That is a shame because I, yeah. Oh well. They have <laughs> cinematic views in the hangar for no good reason that run at 1,000 FPS and melt your GPU, but not in the cruise. Yeah. And F explain you have the flyby. Exactly, Alex. Yeah, exactly. I haven't seen the new Emirates livery. Is there a new Emirates livery? Let's have a quick Google. Three days ago, officially unveils new look. Wow. Oh, it's not a uh, not a vast change over the old one. <laughs> so they made the Emirates written on the fuselage bigger. They made the wingtips red. Quite nice. And then they've done a sort of a 3D effect on the tail rather than the older 2D one that they had. Thanks for those follows. Really appreciate it. Atlanta control just disappeared to little less stress. Thanks, James. Good news. Yeah, so it looks like a flag. A bit like the British Airways one. It looks like a wavy flag. Um, I don't know. I think a lot of people will struggle to tell the difference, frankly. <laughs> Can I say that? Emirates are quite good at having sort of one-off liveries. They've, they've had lots of good ones. So, I, I quite like those. I can't say this new one is such a uh, vast change. Goodness me, they've had that old livery, the, or their current livery, for a long time. It's very modern. It, it, it was a clever idea when they first came up with it. And then they added the belly branding in 2005. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I don't think many people are going to notice. <laughs> Unless you're into aviation.
Thanks, Max, for the follow and Rusty for the subscription. Blood Dispatch says there's Blue Expo one. I've seen that a lot at work. Yes, I like that one. Yeah. James, thank you so much for the £20 super chat. James, very generous. Thank you so much. James says, hope you're well. What's your opinion on the controversy about Airbus's plans for single pilot operations in long haul and cargo? Seems a little scary. Firstly, thank you so much, James. Uh, really appreciate it as ever. Thanks for supporting the channel. I hope you feel better soon. Um, I haven't seen the plans for single pilot operations in long haul and cargo, but I'll say what I always say to that, which is basically, I'll believe it when I see it. Um, let me just Google Airbus single pilots. Approaching top of the scent. So who's this? Exclusive to Reuters. Cathay working with Airbus on single pilot system for long haul. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hmm. I might have to reserve my thoughts on that. Um So the gist of it seems to be there's a plan to have on a long haul flight reduced cruise pilots so for those of you who don't know what normally happens on short haul you'll have two pilots sitting in the seats um, and it is an option for one pilot to do what's called uh, there's managed or monitored rest or whatever else it's called in different airlines top percent is soon indeed chaos we'll start down shortly in fact let's put it in let's go down Start with our usual ten thousands. Let's go down to yeah, we'll put ten in. Let the airplane do its thing. Managed descent, Mac, there's out magenta, thirteen thousand. Put in the altitude now with the Q and H of three zero two six. So yeah, it sounds like what's being looked into or investigated is the idea that you could have pilots um, and on longer long haul cruise sections, why not have one pilot sitting in the flight deck instead of two? Because on long haul flights, when you have three pilots, you'll have two in the flight deck and then one will be on rest. And then the one who's resting in the bunks or wherever else will come to the flight deck and sit back in the seat or one of the seats and then the other pilot can go and rest. But always there's two pilots in the seats. Now, they're, if they're going to get rid of that second pilot in the seat, then it means that both pilots, then the one pilot who's remaining there must not fall asleep. So on a long haul flight, let's change this anywhere else. Um, on a long haul flight, sleeping is obviously the, the key thing, is that how the pilot's managing their rest. because. It's not about how long they've been at work. It's about what their body clock is saying, part of the circadian rhythm. So it could be daylight where they are, but they could be absolutely tired and exhausted because, of course, their bodies think it's time for bed. If you have one pilot sitting there and they're jet lagged trying to deal with that, then it's going to be very hard for them to stay awake, potentially. Um, so Flight Dispatch says, would it reduce the need for a relief pilot? I think that would be the idea, exactly, yeah. They're just trying to reduce the number of pilots. The fact is, to fly an aircraft around, you need two pilots. To fly an approach or anything like that, you need two pilots. And if anything were to happen on that flight, American you'd need two pilots to, to manage uh, the situation. Level, uh, three, five, zero. What they're talking about is just saving money by removing a pilot uh, from the flight deck and making someone sit there on their own in the dark or whatever else to try and manage that uh, rest. Now, it's a study being done. That's up to them to figure out whether it works or not. Uh, but that is all my basic understanding of it from what I've seen from that article anyway. But I could be totally wrong on that. Mac. I do have a hard ref to you. Very good point. <laughs> Golf Alpha says, could be done like trains where driver has to respond to frequent alerts. There you go. There you go. See, this is the sort of thing. It sounds like it's, uh, yeah, 
mentioning. So in summary, it sounds like they are looking at whether you can have, instead of having to have three pilots, why don't you have one pilot resting and one pilot flying. Now the workload in the cruise probably permits that. So the question is, how will they make it work at all other times? How will they guarantee those pilots are rested enough for it to be safe? And that's presumably what they're going to spend a lot of time looking into. Flight Dispatch asks, when any delays come in, surely there'll be issues with crew outs. There you go. These are all things that have to be considered. Flight Sim John says, I'd rather have someone there to talk to. Yep, sure. Yep. Lauren Reese has just heard a jet set on the Amsterdam radar. Fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> James says, fair enough. I know what I'd prefer between dual and single. Yeah. And I know what I'd prefer to. <laughs> Crispy recommends an electric shock bracelet where it detects you falling asleep. <laughs> wow. Yes. Quite. What a career that would, uh, <laughs> that would be. Thrust idle. I maintain my point, which is so that's that's different to single pilot airplanes. It's normally the topic that comes up. Um, so it's a good question from James, because I maintain that to fly an airplane you need two pilots. There's a reason there's two pilots on short haul, <laughs> because you need two when you're doing anything of any sort of workload. But sitting over the ocean, middle of the night, do you really need two? That's the question. other things to consider I'm sitting here in my Airbus all going well uh, my side stick malfunctions suddenly starts inputting and I can't use this side stick to remove that input I need to get to this side stick and then use the priority override button to cancel out my broken side stick for example trust idle how much into 13,000 now that's not going to happen is it if there's no one there because they're off in the rest. That would be one example. Something to consider anyway. Because if that happens today even if this other pilot is doing that rest thing we talked about they could wake up I'm sure they'd hear or you would wake them up and then they could do it sort it out but if they're not there <laughs> it's not going to happen but maybe this whole thing is talking about maybe they're not talking about them leaving the flight deck maybe it's talking about um, having them on the flight deck but asleep there you know who knows this is the thing isn't it there, there's it's it's just an article Is I work a lot of night shifts, and one thing that always keeps you awake is keeping talking to a colleague. Yeah, there you go. Flight Sim says, What if they put a cabin crew in there to keep you awake? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they might be considering that. All that would do is save you the difference in salary between a pilot and a cabin crew, but if it saves money. Josh said, did you ever consider the RAF when you set your sights on being a pilot? I did consider, but I never made any progress in that direction. Very difficult, very strict requirements, things like eyesight and so on. So very easy not to make the cuts for that. But I didn't actually pursue it to any real level. Lauren Reese says, cabin crew have their own responsibilities. Absolutely. So you'd, you'd have a fully trained cabin crew who you're paying and have spent time and money training and then you're just going to sit them in the flight deck. I don't, I don't, I don't think that would be this, the answer here. Like I say, I suspect it's something to do with keeping the pilots in the seat. Oh, but then that's not far off what you can do now. I really, I don't know. I don't know. David says, what if the pilot suddenly dies? There you go. You're asking all the right questions. <laughs> Again, I'm certain that uh, 
the people investigating this also are asking these questions. The article actually notes that there's a lot of hurdles to get through to see if that can happen. More beautiful weather. Nick K says, here's my prediction, not in our lifetime. Agreed. I don't think we'll see single pilots aircraft in general until many years from now. Many years from now. It's just, uh, you need you need one pilot, then you need two. We need one engine, then we need two. You know, we need one hydraulic system. Well, we've got three. You know, it'd be cheaper to avoid all those things, but we can't. We just can't do it in aviation. It's not how it works. Getting bumpy as we descend out that wind. Or oh, still in it actually, 80 knots across. Must remember to use my FCU. Thanks again, James, for a very kind uh, super chat. Really appreciate it. Flight Sim, John. Um, yeah, I can see what you mean. If they would just, just change the legislation and say that if you're sleeping in the seat under sort of um, monitored rest or whatever it is, then if that could count towards extending your duty time to allow you to fly long haul, maybe that's all this, this ultimately amounts to. Yeah. Ed Haslam says, went for cadet training at RAF Cranwell many years ago and failed on my eyesight. Kind of ended my dreams of flying for a living, but I wish I'd pursued airline flying. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the eyesight's a common one, isn't it? PG says, how long will the A320 take to pull up after auto land configured and no one to retard at 10 feet? Uh, it would land because at, if it's auto landing at 10 feet, we, it commands thrust levers to idle by telling us retard, retard. But it's already idled the engines earlier. It will go to thrust idle already. What will happen is it will land and if your thrust levers are still in the climb gate, once it touches down, then the thrust will, could potentially drive up to climb again. That's where it would go wrong, and then it would go off the end of the runway in that case. Because it would retract the spoilers. Yeah, it'd be a mess. I don't know the crossing limit of the A330-900, I'm afraid. <laughs> Lazarus might have to divert. <laughs> I'm sure it's above 30 knots. Josh asks, do you hope to progress onto heavy Airbus aircraft like the 350 or 380 in the future? Indeed, I do. I do, absolutely. DG27, good to see you. Thanks for coming along. DG says, you used to get a nice hot meal. Now all you get is a sandwich. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> James says, I suppose you never know in the future. It could be fully autonomous. Look at how we are compared to 100 years ago. Who's to say it won't be fully AI in another 100 years? Scary, but would be considered the norm. Agreed. I, I think it could happen. I just think it's, it's considerably further away. For 20 years now, we've been hearing about single pilot airplanes and we've seen drones come into existence and fly around on their own but we're not at a stage with aviation where that's about to happen i don't think for commercial passenger travel right still in des down to uh, ten thousands what happens at the end of the arrival? Where should we be? The Kiwi. There's 5,000 at Zello. Let's put it in. No, don't do it on there. Let's put in. Let's go to 7,000 on the downwind lake, as it were. And. 
I'm just going to take it really shallow. And my FCU does show the VS in minus and positive as well. It's very good. So we do VS 500s. That blue 7000. Dylan asks, what are the color tests to be a pilot? What are the rules of mild color blindness? Now that's interesting. Color blindness can be an issue to getting a medical to fly airliners. The reason is, of course, that we use color coding. So you need to be able to tell the difference between blue, green, blue, brown. You know, a lot of this is color based. However, I'm sure. Oh, getting the lag again. Hold on. I suspect there's different forms and degrees of color blindness that are acceptable. It would also depend on the country you're in. Um, so. I can't answer that question for you, I'm afraid, but hopefully someone, if you go go to the uh, Aviation Authority where you live and see what they say. Excuse me, getting tired. <laughs> Talking about with the sleeping. Evening, Philip Whitehead. I hope you're well. Ed says, we still use 1990s hardware technology for reliability reasons, so automated flight is way up in my mind. Exactly. The certification is huge. Now my sim is suffering. Yeah, Dylan, definitely go to the go to the, your aviation authority. They'll have a section on medical and, and manuals about it. And ultimately, you could go and do you know, or well, you can see from that, or maybe you could ask them directly. And they might ask you to do a test. It might be that they don't need to have a diagnosis for you, as such as they do an actual test on you and see what you what you can do, things like that. What's that down there? What's that? It's like a huge car park or train yard or something. Well, as is tradition in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's becoming unflyable. That's just we arrive. Don't know why it does this. It's missing inputs. Philip is still learning the 320 in the sim. Excellent. Train yard, I'd say, Sidonby. Yeah, very cool. Don't see such big things like that in Europe on that scale. Look at that. That's just massive. Massive. Georgia is full of logistics yard, says Jack. There you go. If you're that sleepy, shouldn't you have another pilot with you? Yeah, well, my other pilot's left. <laughs> She's sleeping in the other room. <laughs> Already taking a controlled rest. Danny says, what if I wear glasses? Would that be a problem? No, depending. Again, it depends on what your prescription is and in the country you live in, what they require. But not necessarily. A lot of pilots wear glasses. One of the big train yards from Norfolk Southern, says Century. Thank you. There you go. Ed says, what age is it considered too late to become an airline pilot? I really wouldn't like to say... I think that's a personal choice. Do you ever fly in VR? It would be amazing to get your reaction to the 32NX in something like the Vajo era. Yeah, I've flown in VR, but with the Oculus Rift S, not the uh, not, not something as fancy as the uh, Aero. I do like VR. I do like it a lot. Okay, things are smoothing out a little bit. There's 10,000 feet. Let's use our LS buttons on. Look at that. Brilliant. Get the lights on. Get the seatbelts on. Oh, I can hear the rumble of the lights. I like that. Very good. Bar F, we are on the QNH. Seatbelts are on. Minimums we've set. Auto brake low. Engine mode like normal. Approach at this is complete. 
Very interesting checklists. It says, might not be too late for me. No. I've seen people start to learn to fly at age 40, you know. And older. It's not, you know, it's less usual. And you have to consider where you want your career and what the money might be like and how that compares to your current career and all these sorts of things. But, you know, 10 years into your career, it's quite a strong place to be. You, it, you know, 10 years into flying, if... if the industry is doing well uh, you could be a captain on short haul flying people on holiday down to the Canary Islands and you could be the, the captain on that flight you know no no problem in 10 years um, you could also be <laughs> redundant or a low paid cadet you know these are, this is the thing with aviation isn't it in Europe especially try turning off rolling cash this time. okay we should try that next time rolling cash Bernard says, this slowdown is recent and you only started using live traffic. Yeah, I might have to get rid of the live traffic. James put 32 to 64 RAM. Yeah, let's have a look at the RAM. That's a good point. I've got, oh, wow, 25 gigabytes of RAM used. Wow. Did not expect that. Traffic, traffic. Nope. Let's focus up. TCAS blue. That's good. Traffic, traffic. The 800 feet below. Okay, I'm going to push. Well, I wouldn't fiddle with anything now. I'll let the TCAS sort it out. However, traffic, traffic. We're actually just going to keep getting these warnings. So I'm going to push the level off. BS zero. Let's go up to nine thousand feet. This wouldn't happen in real life, of course, you'd have a controller. VS plus 1200, and then we'll be a thousand foot separated from our colleague. Atlanta traffic, Delta 843, exiting 1 November, going down Foxtrot Golf to Echo to 26 left, Atlanta. James said, I had that after long flights. For me, it was the RAM issue. 32, sorry, we just did that. Yeah, good. Okay. Sounds busy out there. Oh, lots of chat. Sorry. Uh, that's no problem. We... Um, We'll follow you in. I'll just make my turn after I see you make your turn onto the base lake. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Awesome. So, Delta we'll follow zero. our colleague once we see them break off. Localizer and we'll build in that separation uh, ourselves. Right. What we can also do, of course, is slow down. I can't see traffic right behind us, so I'm going to pull the speeds. Come back to 220. Ah, oh, this FC is great. The paranormal says, "Hey, nice to see some airlines again. Excellent, yeah, glad you're enjoying it. I've still got a 3080 in the system, indeed. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's the traffic. I think that is the problem. But then we had it in New Zealand, if you remember. It all of a sudden did it to us as we arrived into uh, Queenstown, and you know there was nothing particularly stressful about Queenstown." There was not much traffic there. <laughs> That's what makes me suspicious, but certainly worth trying. What I will do... Start at the replay software. Thanks, Echo, for the follow. And high flyer. Flight dispatcher slowing down behind. Thank you. Oh, I lost our colleague. Where are they gone? And line of traffic southwest. Two seven nine is turning uh, base four two six uh, right. Looks like we'll be number two. They're turning base. 
Uh, where are they? Atlanta traffic, Delta 2738 from the north, turning base to Zello for 26 right. Okay. Okay, let's activate the approach phase. Yeah, probably a lot of my RAM is going to the amount of programs I'm using. Melissa, we're flying to Atlanta. Well, the skies are clear. Is 12, nine miles from Abyss, uh, About 5,000. The risk of getting high here, so let's head down. I'm still getting used to this selector because it doesn't have hundreds and thousands, it sort of does it on speed. Let's go down, thrust that 11%. 24 miles out. Miles 8,000 feet up, so that's about right actually. Although we're actually slightly closer than that. So let's get the speed brakes out and we'll go flat one. Okay. Delta three two zero established hours two six right. Delta two seven three eight intercepting ILS two six right. Uh, currently twenty miles from the threshold. Oh, this is seeming looks amazing. It is good. Okay, speed brakes fully out now. Oh no, 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 don't press that. I'm doing my FCU. There we go, right. FCU. And that works, that works. Excellent. Glide slip star, lock star speed. We've got a slight issue here, which is going to be slowing down. So I don't want the engine to spool up, so I just push the speed in, manage speed. Get the speed brakes out. This is great. There's traffic in front, so we're going to separate ourselves from them. They're five miles ahead. That's plenty. That's no problem. The trick here is, can we get the energy back to get flap two out? We've got a good chance. We've got 20 on headwind, so we've got a good chance here. Flap two. I'm keeping the speed brake out despite that ECAM because the engines are actually idle, so I don't know why it's complaining, frankly. There we go. Right, 180.17, speed brake's away. We'll get enough drag now from the flaps and with that headwind. I don't want to get too slow because we have traffic behind. So now I'm going to pull the speed and select 160. Atlanta traffic, American 466 established, runway 26 right. Right, start and the replay miles. software. Yeah, southwest Atlanta, maintain uh, 200 knots uh, for separation. This is walk towards 1980 in front of you. <laughs> busy, busy. Last person that called, uh, 26 right. 5 by 1, very low. So we're landing up here. Then we're going to vacate one of the high speeds, get ourselves across and just pick a stand over there. No trouble. Straightforward enough, he says. It always unravels on the ground in my streams. <laughs> Good. There we go, 160. Speedbird 999 is 17.6 miles from airfield. Uh, Log rise established. Traffic in front has slowed down. They're now, what's that, four miles ahead. So I'm going to stick with 160. But I, I'm going to need to be careful. As soon as I see them getting closer to us, I'm going to have to go manage speed. This is quite a slow final to be 14 miles out and already back. 5,000 feet is in white for the go-around attitude. Speed brakes are not automatic, no. They will automatically retract in some situations, but they won't deploy. Except on landing. Yeah, except when it says on landing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They are automatic on landing, if that's what you're asking. So once we put the gear down, I'll arm the speed brakes by putting this up, and then they'll be automatic on landing. 
American 466, reducing to minimum approach speed for the speedbird ahead. Uh, ILS runway 26 right. Uh, over speed warning there. Delta 320 vacated uh, 26 right. Eleven miles on the DME, but we know that we're actually about ten miles from touchdown. There we go. How we're doing? Getting closer. That's about yeah. There's three miles separation. Interesting. Pretty realistic. They can squeeze you to sort of two and a half miles. Quite normal. Delta two six. Delta three two zero crossing two six left. Atlanta traffic, turning base. Right, they've slowed down. Manage speed. Gear down. Armed. Lights. Flaps three. Flaps four. And let's hope we haven't left that too late. Landing checklist. EK memo landing. Oh, it's not here yet. Okay, we'll wait for that. Uh, where are we? Atlanta. Atlanta traffic, Delta 2738, RLS 26 right. We're currently seven miles reduced to final approach speed. Speedbird 999 is uh, currently 9.9 .9 nautical miles from airfield. Uh, do you think the speed also to maintain the rush between uh, Delta? Okay, so James right behind us at 2.5. Excellent. That's good. That's going to be tight though. We're going to have to not mess around and get off the runway. Which means that if my auto brakes mess up in any way, as they typically do with this combination of hardware I have, <laughs> uh, poor James might find himself going around. <laughs> 2,000. 2,000, called out. Don't hear that very often. But it makes sense. 2,000 feet on the red out. We're at 3,000 feet above sea level because of the 1,000 feet of the terrain. Look at this big industry here as well. I will try and slow as best I can to give you some time off. Don't you worry, James. That's my my problem to get off the runway. I'll, uh... Oh, in fact, it's your problem. I should say. So I would slow down for yourself. I won't be pushed off the runway by somebody behind. Air traffic sometimes likes to try and scare you, but I won't have it. There's another airplane over there. Look at this. Busy. Busy skies. And you can see, it, I love the dirt coming out of the, uh, the doors on this livery. I Very good. Hello, Chris. Hello to you. Yeah, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM on my streaming, and I'm at 25 gigabytes usage. I, I don't think RAM is my personal issue. I suspect it's not. I think all of this stuff would be improved with a new processor. I can see it happening again, so stand by. Let me just... It's strange. I don't know why resetting it like that is working either. That's what's concerning me. <laughs> that doesn't feel a very convincing fix. <laughs> 1,000. Alright, we are stable. Visual. It's not the longest runway in the world. What's happening? Has the traffic in front landed? Delta A43 lining up on 26 left. Delta's lining up there, they're all vacating. I think the runway's. Delta stop was 279, I'm gonna get across 26 left, uh, fly quick. No worries, hold in, hold in on 26 left for A43. There's a sink there, goodness me. Right, time to land. Really choppy. It is breezy, wind from the right. Cross from landing, let's just hope the frame rate keeps up enough. <laughs> Get that top awesome. ready. Mom, 500. <laughs> uh, right. Or a pilot off. 400. Wow, getting some real sync. Real sync there. Atlanta, Delta A43 taking off, 26 left. Now it's just freezing on me. Come on, Sim, you can do it. 200. I can't fix the stream for you guys, sorry. This is, uh, this is really not great performance. 
It's just a slideshow. Traffic, uh, American 466, 50. making a visual switch over to runway 26 left. 20, retard. Idle. Retard. Six miles. Left rudder. Five. There we go. Reverse is out. Reverse idle. Wow, breezy. That's trying to drag us off to the right there. Let's get on the brakes. We'll take this exit. I'm also getting artifacts on the runway, which I've never had before. I'm not happy. The performance of this sim is not, not in a happy place again. We only just fixed it recently. But there we go. We are down. Welcome to Atlanta. <laughs> Despite my complaining. And Atlanta, Delta 27386, right vacated. That was pretty quick. I think James will be just fine. Yep. Yeah. Atlanta traffic, American 466 on a three mile final. So let's cross over here. Six left. I'm going to leave the lights and the flaps and everything for the replay, of course. To departure. I don't understand uh, the streaming six, software uh, or the simulator software today. On, uh, ILS, okay, there's no one taking off. We saw that five, traffic take off. Nine miles final. Advanced traffic, Delta 2738, crossing runway 26 left. The airport is a huge Yeah, it's huge senior, but we should have no trouble. I think it's... There's some potential that it's this FS traffic. But again, it's running smoothly now. So why is it running smoothly now with all this traffic here, if that was a problem? Stupid 99 there, clear, and we're 26 right. Watch out for the bus. There's a lot of sync. There you go. Look, parallel crossing. Love it. That's great. Whoa. It is... Not quite a slideshow for me. It is a bit better than it was for you guys, but it wasn't much better today, <laughs> sadly. Speedbird 909 crossing air, runway 26 left. Uh, Speedbird 99 just currently on 26 left landing. Uh, apologies, they're holding short two six. Oh, yeah, there's someone there. Thank you, mate. <laughs> yeah, they did a visual switch, which is a very American thing to do. We're going to go and park up on this terminal. Doing it again. And Atlanta traffic, uh, American. I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm really sorry about that. That's not normal. That's unusual. First time we've had that particular issue. Um, let's just get parked up. My computer obviously wants to go to bed today. Apologies, American. Thanks for letting me know. No worries, mate. You go ahead, I'll follow you. <laughs> Thank you, Trevor, yeah, for flying along. Watch my <laughs> really appreciate it. Always good fun. Oh, don't rev the engines that much doing this, understand? Good job, everyone. Uh, who needs AT6? <laughs> <laughs> that, yes, good point. Yes, well done. That was really good. That was great. Awesome. Brexit. Um, that was one of our most successful. That was a lot of us flying along there. Atlanta traffic. And. Really well done to everyone who did fly along because that was the best separation we've managed. We all did that really well. We were all at two and a half miles on final, which is the most efficient separation you're realistically going to get. And we all got ourselves on the ground within the same sort of time frame uh, and without any actual TCASs. <laughs> we almost got one. <laughs> Very good. Very good. There's the Speedbirds made it. Yeah, very good. Well done. I like that. I like it when we manage. <laughs> Great. Right, I'm going to disconnect from that sim. There's the last. Is anyone of our colleagues? Let's just have a look where they came from. On old Vatscope. No, it's not really working now. Right, anyway, I will... Let's load the replay. If you did enjoy, do please leave a like on the way out. 
Jonathan's in the green plane on our left. Excellent. It says, really great fight. Nice to see the issue to an here again. Excellent. Glad you enjoyed it. You can see the whole thing is ground to a halt again. Stand by. And James, thank you so much for your 10 pound super chat. James, really, really appreciate it. Again, very generous. Thank you for supporting the channel. James says, if possible, I'd highly recommend the 5800 3D on B550. Can use your current RAM, etc. Otherwise, 7950 3D, that involves a lot more cost. Yeah, it's just things I'm going to have to consider. I was hoping not to. I will see what happens if I get rid of FS traffic when doing the streams. That that could be that could be the issue here. Anyway, replay time. There we go. Oh, I'm pushing the computer to its limits here, on the simulator, I should say. So we came in, it was just stuttering all over the place. Yeah, pretty much like this. Into the flare, left rudder, squeezing off the drifts, and then just let's get it down, because <laughs> I didn't know what it was doing there. And then we're doing fine, but then I didn't hold enough rudder here, and it really wanted to go left, uh, go to the right. And you can see how the 320 on a wide runway has no trouble. You can get, you can drive almost like a motorway, <laughs> not that you're supposed to, but uh, yeah. There we go. All fine. Just a standard sort of crosswindy landing. Let's put it on approach. Oh, have we finally done it? Have we broken the sim? I don't think this is helping. There seems to be a notable lag just before that message. Right. Let's go there. Let's go there. And I'm going to say thank you all so much for coming along. Thank you for the uh, very kind super chats. Thank you to the moderators for looking after us. Thank you for everyone for your help and information as ever flying in America. <laughs> is uh, always a bit of a challenge for me so really appreciate the help uh, i'm going to say do please keep safe and well and have an absolutely uh, fantastic evening more videos and live streams coming soon on the channel podcast hopefully coming this week if i can get that sorted uh, but yeah thank you so much for your your support and enthusiasm and just chatting along watching along it, it makes a huge difference i really enjoy it um, and we'll be back for more soon and i'm going to see if i can remove whatever is causing our problems here but uh, yeah thank you so so much for bearing with us and we'll see you next time keep safe and well bye bye